Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. The Zindi are here, Enterprise is here. It's been a long road, hasn't it, getting from there to here. The final Star Trek IP has been released into the game with Star Trek Enterprise, the Jonathan Archer era. And with that has brought it some new challenges, hasn't it? So it's brought it the new Zindi hostiles. Where are the new Zindi hostiles? So the new Zindi hostiles, uh, if you zoom straight out and you look, you can find your big one million trillion bazillion light years cubed cube. Yeah, that was a no-brainer, wasn't it? And then you move across and you find this space here. It looks a little bit like Swarm Space. This is Zindi Space. So Zindi Space starts off with a relatively low warp range. It starts off at warp range 50. Warp range 50. Now, I would imagine that this is, to be fair, this is a Ops 40 plus expansion. Not anything really lower than that. Should be going very high with it. Uh, maybe the, the late 30s. Obviously, remember the x -Borg tree, which is where all this is all based, doesn't even open up until Ops 38. So, warp range 50 shouldn't be a massive issue. Today, I'm going to talk about um, what to do, what not to do, do's and don'ts. We're going to talk about some crews. We're going to talk about some low-level crews. We're going to talk about some some intermediate crew, some high level crews. Uh, we're going to talk about the favours, a little bit about the faction store. So, a pretty in depth, um, but we're going to go through it and we're going to see exactly what this Zindi space is all about. So, let's start off with these first three systems. Now, these first three systems, the entry level systems, they luckily do not have fog of war. And these hostiles in here are absent of something which is pretty important to the entire loop. Level 34 and level 35 ships, these do not have any ship abilities and this will play a huge part moving forward. These Zindi Reptilian Scouts, they are relatively powerful. However, they do have some quite pronounced changes compared to the rest of the loop just in these three first systems so as i mentioned already the exos but the second thing is we're going to look at is the firing pattern now the firing pattern for these early doors ones uh, for the people just sort of entering the loop if we go into stfc.space we can see they just carry three energy weapons three energy weapons meaning that you can use your standard pike maro chen against these hostiles and that's probably where i would suggest that you start um and you can run full critical loadouts on these and I make that a relative point because obviously all the way through the game we have been focusing on critical builds and we've always said try and do the most critical damage and stuff like that it's the stuff that blows the hostiles away and you can continue to do that with these first three systems so those first three systems pretty standard to any other grind now they are relatively low in terms of loot the 34s as you can see pay one and the 35s pay two or three so very very small amounts of loot um so not ideally where you would want to be grinding where you want to be starting to grind is when you start to move up so start to move up into the level 40 systems now the level 40 odd systems they do have fog of war meaning that you cannot look into the system unless you have a ship present so we're going to send the disco in there right now and we're going to take a quick look at these hostiles because these vary massively so if we look at these hostiles and we click one you will see these two icons down here now if you're relatively new to uh, the higher level ships high level hostiles you will notice that quite a few especially when you start to get into sort of g5 space ship abilities are present on hostiles and they can be seen down here so this particular hostile and all hostiles starting at these systems and moving up do have two ship abilities their two ship abilities are the first one at the start of the round this hostile reduces players critical hit damage by 500 percent for two rounds this ability can stack, that's very important. So that means basically in round one, you have a 500% reduction to critical damage. Somebody's gonna steal my hostile. Watch, ready, da -da 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 -dum. there they go. Oh no, they didn't. So we've got a 500% reduction to critical damage. Now for most players that are hitting these hostiles, that will totally wipe out your um, critical hits, taking them down to zero because of the way that critical is calculated. And I'm gonna talk about that in a few moments. However, in starting in round two, that then stacks on top of each other. So you end up with a 1000% reduction. Nobody who is should be or will be hitting these hostiles will have a thousand percent critical damage. Therefore, you will be firing no damage at all in relation to when you hit a critical hit, meaning that the likes of Hugh, Khan, all the hostile all the hostile beating crews that we use to punch up and deal excess criticals are going to be useless in this loop starting at the level 40 hostiles. The second ability on this tab is Zindi Weaponry. At the end of every round, the ship fires a particle beam. That 
deals lethal damage to enemy player sh ships. So enemy player ships, I don't think that's very well worded, basically meaning the ship that has attacked it. So you've hit it, it is then going to fire the particle beam at the end of every single round. And that particle beam is absolutely ginormous. To put it in perspective, it fires six times. If we pull up the firing pattern from stfc.space, we can see here a stark difference to the firing pattern compared to the early level 34, 35 hostiles. You can see you have five weapons firing two shots every single round. They are all kinetic. That's going to come into our crewing element of the video shortly. And it also, weapon six, look at that. It fires six shots every single round. And this is that particle weapon. This is that particle beam, weapon six. So look at weapon six. And look at the minimax damage doesn't actually do it justice because it says it only fires a hundred thousand. It is actually firing a hundred billion, a hundred billion per shot, meaning that it's going to take out absolutely everybody. Absolutely everybody will die to the particle weapon when that fires absolutely massive and nobody has a chance don't let stfc.space fool you to think that it's only a hundred thousand a shot it is 100 billion 100 billion and that is even more pronounced now generally when you fight a hostile damage is split so whatever damage is there 80 percent of it goes to shields providing that you have some and 20 percent of it goes to hull if we go back into game and we take a look at the ship's second ability this little plus icon on combat start all damage this hostile deals completely ignores players shields meaning that every single trickle of damage every single unit of damage goes straight through to your hull so absolutely huge and 100 billion per shot meaning that if it gets to the end of a round you are dead uh, there is nothing in the game that can stand up to this especially because it fires six times even if something comes out later on that ends up having 105 billion thinking oh, i can get through the um, first round it will then die on the second shot of the weapon remember that weapon fires six times every single round so you have absolutely no chance at all absolutely no chance at all of beating this hostile without a bit of help and that help comes from the faction store the faction store, which has obviously been revamped, it's not a new faction store, it's the Xborg store. The Xborg store has been expanded massively. It's been expanded massively, meaning that we don't just have some of the catch up mechanics for the likes of Actian stuff, Stella, um, Botany Bay, Defiant that we had before, TC for if, uh, if efficiency for the Meridian and the Talios. That was all we had before. We've now got Mona Veen, we've got Delta Quadrants, uh, Voyager stuff, we've got Fisher stuff. We've got a little bit of addition to help try and speed up those loops, try and save you a little bit of grind which is nice but what we also have similar to Bajoran and the section 31 we now have favors favors basically meaning instant research I call them instant research because they don't take any time you press the button if you can afford it and that will then um, apply that research to you so there is a long list of them look at this I think there's 27 or something like that new favors absolutely massive list of new favors which is nice but there are three which are so important to you and we'll talk about those three now the first one is particle beam delivery Delay. So particle beam delay is this one. So particle beam delay costs you, start off with, it costs you the first two levels are simply old X-Borg credits, the standard X-Borg credits. That's what I'm going to call them. There are now four different levels of X-Borg credits. The standard that I'm going to call them, which are common basically. You've then got uncommon, rare and epic export credit so just to make that a little bit more complicated for you <laughs> but the first two levels of this particle beam delay costs standard or common x borg credits and you can get that up and what does the particle beam delay do it delays the particle beam would you believe and if we click this little i button at the top here we can see there are three levels of it and you get a two round delay meaning that a two round delay meaning that your particle beam won't fire until round three and then a four boost meaning it won't fire until round five and then a six delay obviously meaning that your particle beam from your hostiles will not fire until round seven very important research. Without this, the loop is basically dead to you. 
You have to do this research before you even start trying to kill these hostiles in any sort of quantity. You might be lucky and you can one-shot a 42 or something like that and um, you're an Ops 53 player or something crazy and then it's going to take you 5 million hostiles to even get one chest redeemed because the reason we're doing this loop uh, is if we go right to the top of this, we can see the Zindi Bounty, uh, sorry, the Zindi Scrap Exchange. This is what the loop is about. It's about doing these refines to get your Xborg reputation to work on that to unlock more favors and then to get your different export credits and these are the four different types i've seen export credits the standards or the commons what you want to call them and then uncommon rare and epic credits and every day you pull this you will are guaranteed to get rep reputation standard credits and uncommon credits and then you will have a chance of getting both the rare and the epic which the chance is a 33 percent on the rare and 15 percent on the epic credits you can trade down, I'll point that out really quickly. So let's say you do have some uncommons as I do. So, so wrong one. If I click the other one, <laughs> the, the uncommon trade down. So if you've got uncommon credits, you can trade them down for more and increase value, which is nice. There's no reverse efficiency and you can trade down your uncommon credits for common credits. And likewise, you can change down rares for uncommons and you can trade down epics for rares, uh, which is quite a nice little feature. I quite like that. So that's the first um favor that you have to invest in without that you are the loop is basically dead to you so before you do anything you need to get this upgraded it is possible to get this straight to level three on day one providing that you have some uh, of the old originals common export credits to hand for you to be able to upgrade them because you can do the missions that launched on day one which you will find in your holodeck and um, that will give you enough uncommon credits for you to be able to get level three of this particle beam delay the second favour that I'm going to shout out to is um, this one, Zindi Escalation. So Zindi Escalation increases the base Zindi scraps dropped by Zindi targets. Now this is a slightly, has, has more levels, this has 5 levels and we can see you get a 20% bonus at level 1, 50, 75, 125 and at level 5 that is a 200% bonus. Not possible to be maxed on day 1 without spend. Um, you will need to uh, obviously invest, in, invest some time into the loop or invest money uh, in order for you to be able to get the necessary credits to be able to max out this favour. Could also be a rep lock and um, i've not looked specifically into that but there could also be reputation locks where you need to get your xborg rep up to certain levels to unlock different levels of the favor if it's similar to how other favors have worked in the past in other trees so that that's the second um favor that is so important to you to help speed up this loop you imagine if you're getting a 200 percent bonus and then you're running the right level of officers which again we're going to go through crewing in a second you've got the potential of getting up to sort of a 450 ish percent bonus by the time you've added in the likes of 5 of 11 new picard doctor below deck things like that including this favor which will make this a far more palatable grind for you because obviously it looked horrendous on day one it does still look horrendous for some ops levels. Again, I'm going to talk about that later. The third favour which is really important to you is Critical Damage Floor. Now, Critical Damage Floor um, allows you to, when the hostile removes the 500 and then eventually the 1,000% critical damage, having a Critical Damage Floor means that it cannot go below whatever your Critical Damage Floor bonus is. So if you have this at 10%, that means that your Critical Damage will never go to zero. The bottom it will ever go to is 10%. And we see all the way through level five, you end up with a 100% bonus. So 100% bonus for your critical damage. Now, a 100% bonus doesn't mean 100% extra if you hit a critical shot. What this is, this is the multiplier of standard damage. So you imagine if you fire a 1 million shot, 1 million shot times by 100% is still only 1 million. Make sense? So if you fire a critical hit shot while you've got this, you're basically guaranteed to do standard shots. So, might not sound too impressive, but I'm going to explain the benefit of another factor within the game, which makes this even more relevant. Now, you can double this from 100% to 200% by the purchase of a Prime. Prime Critical Floor adds a further 100% or even gives you a starting 100%, um, and that will make this loop, again, more palatable and make critical damage more relevant. So let's talk about critical hits. So critical hit calculation. Now, this is something that is really important, very misunderstood, I think, by lots of people. What is critical damage? Now, if we look at a ship and we pretend 
that um, no other research is taking effect because there are researches which help in specific scenarios. For example, you can increase your critical hit damage by 20% versus hostiles, for example. That will That is situational and that doesn't show in your ship screen. So let's pretend that none of that exists just for the reference of this calculation. How do we work out what my sort of base, if you want to call it, because of these are the numbers, what is my base critical hit damage? So if I hit a critical hit, my standard damage is multiplied by 315%. Okay, so let me quick, quickly show you what that looks like. So if you started off with a 1 million power shot, that is your standard shot, but you hit a critical. That means that you would then times that by your critical damage, which is 315%. To calculate that, you turn that into a decimal point, which is 3.15, meaning that your 1 million turns out to be, using this math, to 3.15 million. That would be what your critical shot would be. So that is very important just to calculate how you actually calculate a critical hit. Now, and I want to talk about the impact of hull breach. What is hull breach? So hull breach is propped by certain officers. One of them is on here, which is Lorca. So Lorca triggers hull breach. You've got the likes of um, Pick Wharf who tri triggers hull breach. Is he hull breach or is he burning? No, he is, yeah. Hull breach. Pick Wharf triggers hull breach. You've got the likes of Gorkon, obviously one of the day one um, officers. He triggers hull breach. And we've also now got Balana Torres. Balana Torres below deck now has a hull breach trigger ability. What does hull breach do? So if we go back to our calculation and we look at this. So this is our calculation. Now what we do to apply hull breach to this, it is simply a net of that damage of 1.5. So basically it's 150% of critical damage. That's what hull breach does. So all we're doing in essence is taking the 3.15 million and we are then going to times that by 1.5 and that will give us what our hull breach critical would be, which means that we actually have a final damage output of 4.725 million. So that is the impact of what hull breach does. Hull breach takes your net critical damage and multiplies it by 1.5. Now that's going to play a really important role. Because obviously, what I said, I said earlier, you said, I said don't use don't use critical crews unless you're hitting them very early systems. There is a scenario where you can go back to using criticals and hull breach, and that relates to that critical damage flaw. Now the critical damage flaw can be used. Um, to in order to actually give you a net effect providing you do not buy the prime I'm going to talk about this purely free to play once you get the favor up to rank four It will then start having some benefit to you. Let me explain the math on this as well I'm sorry there's a little bit of math involved involved in this, but let me explain it so if we take the critical damage floor and you think that we've got a 70% bonus, so it's a 70% bonus if you have critical damage floor level four yeah, critical damage floor level four. <laughs> Got to be really careful how you say that, haven't you? So that's seventy percent. So seventy percent being the net damage. Let's go back to our calculation and let's start right from scratch again. So we've got a one million power shot. A one million power shot. We are then going to apply critical damage to it. So that then takes us to seven hundred thousand because that's seventy percent. Because we are taking the one million, we're timesing it by 0.7 because that's all of our critical damage is because the Zindi hostile has wiped out all of our other bonuses. So we've then got this 700,000. We're then going to apply our hull breach. So 700,000 and then we're going to times that by 1.5 to apply our hull breach gives us 1.05 million. And remember our base shot was only 1 million. Now is this massively substantial? No, it's not. It's not massively substantial. However, from level four, you can start to use hull breach again, meaning that once this is level four, you can start bringing um, Hugh back into the game. You can start bringing Gorkon back into the game if that's who you've got to increase crit critical chance and all that sort of thing to then start getting um, the bonuses back to where they should be. Don't want to be bringing any critical damage increases. So the likes of Odo and Troy that was released last month, they are going to do nothing for you because it's wiping you down to your floor. It's all about your critical damage floor 
floor research. Once you have this ability, this favor up to that 70%, you can then go back to using hull breach to increase your damage and getting the critical. So you want to put Hugh and ideally Balana below deck. If she is maxed at 100%, rank four is the minimum I say she sort of becomes useful. Same with uh, obviously the morale officer, which was um, Harry Kim, should have been Neelix. And obviously burning with Neelix, uh, which is... Um, obviously his ability because he bends down the kitchen apparently so really really important now there is one other scenario where you may want to apply hull breach to your ship even if you do not have critical damage floor at 70 percent against these hostiles you might be thinking that's absolute madness it's not isolytic damage similarly if you are using so if you are using an interceptor and you have for example the artifact that applies to this which is this one, the Blade of Tacon. So increases isolated damage on an interceptor, the opponent has hull breach. So as much as hull breach will be doing nothing for you in, in relation to criticals, which is why we normally use it, um, it will still allow you to increase your isolytic damage. Obviously, when you're fighting these hostiles and you want an interceptor. Likewise, if you are using uh, morale, you can use the explorer one. If you sorry, if you're on an explorer, you can use the morale boosting one. And then likewise, you can use burning on battleships. So that is one reason why you would think about taking uh, one of the states um, against these hostiles even if your critical floor is lower than the 70 percent so that's really important for you to do so that is a general gist on obviously sort of some of the math behind things and how stuff works in relation to your ships and obviously what you should be doing but now let's talk about crewing so crewing is so important now i've crewed up three ships so I've crewed up three ships, and the three ships that I've crewed up, uh, I've chosen a relatively low-level ship, so I've chosen a Burrell, and the reason I've chosen a Burrell is because I'm an Ops 57, um, I find obviously that my research makes my Burrell bigger than some people's enterprises when they're level 34, 35. So I'm using a Burrell just to sort of give us a more accurate stand on things. Okay, the other crew that we're using is, um, we're going to, I'm going to put that onto a Valdor. So a Valdor, and I'm using this crew, and I'll explain why. And we'll go through that. And then the third one, which is obviously the most prominent one on my main ship, is this crew on my Sompec, on my biggest ship. So we're going to start off at the bottom, and we're going to work up, up to our top crew. So I'm going to send the ships out to their relative systems, and I'm going to explain what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and how you can make it better for you. So first of all, I'm quickly going to show you a death. So I'm going to show you... The ridiculous weapon. So we're going to go into our battle log. Remember that I have two levels of the um, favor which um, delays the particle weapon. So the first four rounds I'm free. You can see I died in round five. Okay. Now I'm using Talan. Uh, obviously Talan is good against kinetic weapons. She is reducing the damage. But then if I go down to round five, we can see the particle weapon at its worst. We can see, look at all them numbers. Look at all them numbers. 100 billion damage. 100 billion per shot. Fire six times. If you cannot kill this in four rounds, you are dead. Yeah, and that is the same for every single hostile starting at the level 40 systems. So the level 40 systems, my Burrell, with that crew, cannot take these on. It just cannot take these on. I am max bonuses on these. Obviously, I'm relatively well researched. I'm an Ops 57 player, and I'm taking out about a third of the hull. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this back um, and we're going to send it up with Pike Moreau Chen and we're going to show you the 34s and 35s. Now it feels strange, obviously you're going to be level 38, level 40, something like that and you're going to be unable, you're going to be hitting level 34 hostiles. That just sounds stupid, doesn't it? But these hostiles are designed um, to be very, very difficult and they're designed for you not at the moment, definitely not, to be able to hit your appropriate level. So we're going to swap back to Pike Moreau Chen. And remember, with Pike Moreau Chen, we can use our below deck officers. We could use the likes of Balana Torres. We can use Hugh to get our criticals. And I'm going to show you that obviously, even though the ability, it doesn't say that the ability is there, I'm going to prove that the ability is not there by sending the ship back and being able to have a look at it. Okay, we'll do that. We'll be back in a second. Now, let's move on to the Valdor. So, the Valdor. Now, what's very important with these is hitting within triangle. So, remember your battle triangle. If you need a refresher, if you're not 100% certain on it, um, let's talk about the triangle really quickly. 
So if you click your icon at the top here, your actual ship, you can see Explorer it is strong against interceptors because its attack focus is accuracy, which combats the interceptor's dodge, and the defense is shields. And the shield is one of the lower options when you are on an interceptor. So interceptors are the most important. If you want to see the full triangle, you can do that by clicking a hostile and then clicking the emblem and you can see the entire battle triangle so you can see what works for each so if you're not 100% and you've not got this memorized you can do it at any point by clicking on a hostile even if you click on a player ship you can click the battle triangle to be able to actually see what's going on the combat triangle we should call it it's always been called the battle, the battle triangle now what I was saying before about you being unable to hit your relative ops level this Valdor is relatively well tiered it is um, currently tier 6 and it's about 37 million power now, Silvus, obviously, who helps me out with a lot of my content over on Twitch, uh, his Valdor is something like a tier 8, and I think his was about 22, 23 million. So, obviously, that's just a gap in the research. So, you may struggle to do this. Obviously, I am able to kill the 42s. So, if I target an interceptor with my Valdor, while that goes over there, we'll prove that we can kill that. But let's take a look at the battle log. So, the battle log, we are going four rounds. We are killing it right on the cusp right on the cusp of where that is actually relevant to us we may even sometimes you may find that if you crit a lot because don't forget you've still got standard critical chance of 22 percent that's what i've got because again i have the critical prime which opens up in g5 space for g5 materials when i fire a critical shot because of the ship ability of the hostile my critical shots throw no damage at all so if you end up getting very lucky then you may find that you actually die to the hostile sometimes and then you survive sometimes. We did kill it again. So I'm able to, with an Ops 42 ship, kill the Ops 42 hostiles. However, look at this. Yeah, I'm taking a significant amount of damage. I'm probably going to be able to kill three of these on one hull. We'll target one more and we'll have a quick look at our cargo for this because this is something that's important. So that is another crew that you can use. And let's talk about the crew. So the crew that I'm using, I'm using Harry Mudd, Harrison and Kang. Okay. Now Harry Mudd as captain, the reason that I've put him as captain um, is because he was just who I decided to put there. You do not want to be using Kang as captain because Kang gives you hull breach and is doing absolutely nothing for you. Um, where Harry Mudd's officer ability, all three of these are being used for their officer's ability. So Harry Mudd, if he procs, his ability is a 60% chance of doubling the shots, firing more damage, trying to help you aim to kill that hostile quicker. Harrison, during round one, um, obviously is able to bypass 70% of the hostile's shields, meaning that more of your damage goes to hull, which is absolutely massive, really, really important, obviously to try and do that early damage earlier. And then this is the officer that would vary in this particular crew combination because you make sure you do this based on triangle. So I'm using Kang because I'm fighting interceptors. I'm not doing a deep dive on officers on this part, uh, obviously all the different officers and things, but if you are fighting battleships, you want to be using Shavenik in this crew. And if you are fighting explorers, you want to be using Marcus in this crew. Okay, that's what you're doing because you're increasing the penetration. The penetration meaning how much damage actually gets through the mitigation and actually hits the hostile. So that's what you're trying to do. So you've seen I've been able to kill three. So I've been able to kill three hostiles with my much larger Valdor hitting the 42s. I would expect... I would expect that a normal Ops 42 player with a fresh Valdor, even if it is tier 6 or if you're an Ops 43, 44, 40, 45 even... I don't think you'll be able to hit in the, in the level 42 systems. I think you're going to be moving down. However, I've managed to pick up 256, 256 of the Zindi scraps in one hit. Now, I'm going to quickly show you a fantastic chart created by Jules Verne and Blue Mandalorian. This is the first part of it. Now, this chat will be available on our Discord. Link is down below in the chat section. Once this is a little bit more completed, they will upload it to there. But in terms of screenshots, if anybody needs them, hit me up on Discord and you, I'm be more than happy to share this sort of thing with you. So this is showing you um, what the raw loot you get from the, the each particular hostiles and then what you have the chance of getting if you get a chest. Now, remember, this is only a chance. So if you do get a chest, there's still the option that you do not get um, the Zindi scraps. You can get just normal ship parts from them as well and the ratio that i've seen is probably about 33 percent of the chests um 33 percent of the host of the ships that you hit will drop um a chest containing 
the Zindi scraps. I think you'll get about 45 to 50% chests, and then of those, about 60 to 80% of those uh, actually drop the scraps. So roughly about 33, about, about one in three. Uh, hostiles will drop a chest containing this loot so work this out for yourselves so you can see that we are in uh, obviously the level 40 systems dropping 35 to 38 loot per and obviously i'm not using a loot crew at the moment uh, obviously when you get up to the 42s it increases a little bit there are a big jump there's a couple of big jumps and those big jumps are when we change generation levels so when you go from the 50s to the 51s i.e moving from g4 to g5 sort of levels look at that it trebles yeah, trouble, got nothing like that there. And then likewise, when we're going from the 60s to the 61s, it more than doubles. So there's a huge amount, and obviously the chests are decent as well. However, what we need to pay attention to is what our refinery costs are, which again is on the chart, and I will show you now. Here we go. Now you can see that this is currently um, not completed. So if you are able to provide any details of this, again, on our Discord, so you can see that we're missing... Um, Ops 48, we are missing obviously a fair few levels in the 60s. So if anybody watches this and is able to provide us with some data, please use the data collection channel on our Discord. Again, links to that Discord is down below where you can also access this chart for you to be able to um, dive into this yourself and see things as they update. So we can see here that obviously in the 40s, one chest cost, um, it stays relatively low, uh, 1.5 thousand. And obviously don't forget, I'm looking at a 42 ship. So let's pretend I'm an Ops 44. So I've got a relative, I've got tier six of uh, valdor three and a half thousand per chest three and a half thousand per chest how much did i just get from that run 256 256 and i need three and a half thousand Whew. that would take about 13 holes 13 hulls of my ship now obviously when you are at that level as well the repair costs on these are relatively high you obviously because you, you're not getting billions of titanium like you do in the 50s um you're still getting in the millions of titanium so repairing your ship you need to go do 14 runs just to do a single chest now i will stress this this is the pain point this is what i was talking about early, early on there is a pain point in the 40s and even in the early 50s whereby because you have to punch down so low your your cost chests continue to escalate um that the loop feels horrendous the loop feels horrendous so bearing in mind this feedback has been passed to scopely there's some fantastic work going on in the background to try and make this grind easier the easy fix to this is either increasing the hostile loot or reducing the um cost of the redemptions obviously making them scale a little bit better but you can see the cost of mine with all my research ops 47 it's costing me almost 50 million tritanium which can get expensive so you think 50 million i need to do 14 repairs it's a hell of a lot. It's going to cost me, what, 700? 700 million tritanium or almost. The three quarters of a billion tritanium is very, very expensive. But they are aware and we are trying to make changes. Let's dive back. Before we go on to my most optimum crew and what I use, let's go back over here and let's go with the triangle again. And let's go and hit this. Why is there a 53 hitting these? That would take him approximately 743 years for him to be able to get enough for a refine with that. <laughs> but we hit the level 35 and we killed it. So we've used Pike Moro Chen. Remember, these are all energy based. We took next to no damage. I'm using a Burrell. Obviously, by the time you do this, you should have your epic ship. So you should be able to have your Enterprise. We're taking absolutely no damage. We're killing it in round one, nice and easy. And obviously, we are able to reduce the damage heavily by using Chen. So it does work. Now, did we hit? We did hit a critical. And as you can see, the abilities. I'm not showing because they are not there. We did a critical shot and it was massively higher, you can see, by comparison to my standard shot. So you can use crit, you can use critical builds on these. If you are down, uh, obviously, sort of 38 to the 42 range, you can do it. But you really don't, I wouldn't even bother engaging in this loop until you can at least get up to the level 40 hostiles. That's just my opinion. And also be very, very conscious that you are not expected to be hitting around your ops level. You should be hitting slightly down. And I'll show you this. Where I found to be the most effective for me is in the level 51 systems. So I'm going to show you now. I'm going to hit a 51. Bearing in mind again, I will repeat. Ooh. These, these are so important. These are so important. I'm going to hit this because I'm going to show you. I don't want any. I don't want anybody to steal it. 
These scouts, these wanted Zindi reptilian warships are going to be pivotal to you speeding up your grind. So by speeding up your grind, I killed that and I've just got 40,000 Zindi scraps from that one hostile. 40,000 Zindi scraps from that one hostile. And let's have a quick look. Let's see if we got a chest from it. We did. Open that one chest. Oh, we can't get it from there. I've killed no others. Oh, I have killed other Zindis. But they were all tiny. So we get from that chest, if we look at the... Look at that. We got 100 Zindi bounties, which are used in a redemption once you get to the next favor level um, that you can then use in your faction store for you to be able to redeem for another small amount of credits and also get towards the cosmetic refines. So they are so important. Some people, I think, are just going through the systems and killing these. They're just basically trying to go through the systems like we did in Voyager and try and kill the traders. That is a viable tactic. So we got 40,000 from that one hostile, but what's a normal hostile kill me? Because obviously that's not what we're getting with every single one. Just short of 5,000. Just short of 5,000. Okay. Now I can kill seven or eight of these hostiles before I die. So I can normally get about 35,000. What we do, I'm going to use this hull. Uh, I'm not going to make you watch it. I'm going to use all this hull and we're going to see how much that we actually physically get from one run of these hostiles. Remember, stay in triangle. Be back in a second. And here we are dying on this final hostile. So <clears throat> we managed to, in that one run, we managed to kill. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We managed to kill eight of those hostiles. We would have killed nine if we didn't kill the reptilian warship at the start. So we killed between eight and nine hostiles per, and we're getting about 5,000 per, which means I'm getting about 45 thousand between 40 and 45 thousand raw loot from these because we're getting between four and five thousand so if i look at what my total hull was when i died i 73 thousand so if i take the 40 off that we got from the trader and we add 35 back in so basically just sort of take 35 thousand off it we ended up with 38 thousand raw loot 38 thousand raw loot plus the chests let's see what we see what we got here Another 7,400. We got 45,000 per. 45,000 per run. Uh, my repair bill on this is 6.8 billion Tritanium. And I am going to need to be able for me to do my refine. I need to be able to get two. Because I'm only pulling singles. I think the two chests is a stretch goal. I would focus. I tell everybody to focus on doing single chest pulls. Now that will slow you down. If you're able to commit the time. By all means go for double chests. If you are in the 60s. You may find the double chests relatively easy. Seems a good thing for that. And if you're in the sweet spot like I am. I could probably quite easily and comfortably. Grind out double chests every day. With a few more runs. However I'm choosing to do single pulls. To remain efficient. And to reduce my grind time so i'm getting about sort of forty-five thousand per run Forty-five thousand per run meaning i need to do three runs per day three runs per day with eight to nine hostiles i need about 25 to 30 hostiles and the crew that i'm using so let's talk about the crew now so the crew that i'm using i think this is the most optimized crew for killing these until you are able to get your floor up because then the crew will change as i've said you can start adding hull breach back in you can start adding uh, obviously hue back in below deck but the crew that i'm using i'm using a full loot crew so i'm using picard with one side of synergy plus a tier four five of eleven my five of 11, so close now 850 need 150 shards to max out so i'm getting 80 percent plus the 100% from those, so I'm getting 180% bonus there, and then I've got the Doctor giving me 20%. So in essence, I've got a 200% bonus, plus I've got that one level of the favour. Okay, so once I get that favour leveled up to 200%, it's going to reduce me down to easily be able to do it in two levels, in two hulls, sorry, two hulls with no other changes. If I maxed out that um, loot gain favour, I will be able to do this in two runs. And I'm also using Paris below deck for additional for additional mitigation, and then six just to provide some stats and make sure that I'm getting the stats on my ship. So that's the crew that I'm using. So I have shown you today. I know this has been a long video. Thank you so much if you stuck with me at this point. If you like the content, please subscribe to the channel. Please, because we try and do these deep dives and these analyticals. And I'm a, a, a go on a bit <laughs> i'm aware of that but please subscribe to the channel if you like all the analytical stuff drop some comments down below let me know what you think uh, if you want any extra help please join our discord we've had some really good chats in there in the crew chat section to talk about these watch it again if you get the time obviously just to pick up anything extra on the loop that you want to look at um i think this loop is going to be five to ten minutes i think ten minutes is much more likely once you get your favors increased um obviously that's going to make it a lot easier especially the loot game one but do not do anything before you
you do that um reducing the, uh, the particle beam delay particle beam delay is an absolute must and then focus on the loot gain and the critical damage flow uh, absolutely really important i hope you've learned something today i hope anybody that didn't understand hull breach or how criticals and things were calculated i hope you've got a bit of education on that thank you so much for watching everybody uh, we will be live on twitch doing some more of this we are live on tuesdays please check out our website uh, check out itsloop.com we've got some fantastic merch on there uh, check out itsloop.com if you want access to this chat again join our discord and you can do that the website has got some fantastic merch on there we've got some really new good stuff we've got t-shirts we've got hats we've got mugs we've got pretty much everything on there so check it out it's lube.com and support the channel in that way the join button down below uh, obviously where you can join and become a member i will give a massive shout out to andy candy va and mini who are our current youtube members thank you so much guys for your ongoing support become a nutter and um, join the nut house but have a fantastic day everybody and remember that everything is better with lube take care and have a wonderful day